everybody. So I guess I, I think I speak for many of you here. I think I speak for many of you here when I say it is a rare gift to be blessed with mentors who invest their time and talents to shape us in our journey. I am lucky to get to speak about one of them today and equally fortunate to be surrounded by more than one mentor also all at the same time. The mentor I'll be speaking of today has accomplished so much from the start. He, like many other great mentors, chose to stay in corporate through these years, fueled by a larger vision to make us to make use of his gifts and his, as he lives a meaningful life, to touch and shape the lives of those they get to lead, so that they may find fulfillment at work and in life. Sir Backy started mentoring me at an early stage in my career. Even before I formally reported to him, he already made time reaching out to people like me. Intimidating, yes, very, but it was very much worth it. He engaged us in casual, um, casual talks, as well as serious business conversations. These engagements were instrumental in making us feel like we were part of something bigger, that even at a very young stage in our careers, our voice mattered. He created an inclusive environment that allowed people like me to speak our minds, even and most especially when our ideas were very unpopular and different. He would always remind me, especially now, even up to now, that I don't need to be liked 100% of the time. That pleasing others is not the measure of leadership. Helping and understanding your vision and values is what defines true leadership. Sir Baki has the extraordinary gift of getting you to deliver above and beyond without ever overtly saying anything. He inspires within you a confidence in yourself and what you can be, that you are more than capable and competent. Your motivator is no longer just winning and not just because you don't want to fail him, Instead, the confidence he gives you makes you feel that winning is your only option because you feel you are the right and the best person for the job, nobody else. He drives us to deliver results by setting a vision of what can be versus telling us what should be. He allows us to craft and unlock possibilities that excite us because he gives us that free hand to reshape the vision with him to something even better and to something we both own. You'd always say, you are here not because you know what I know. I did not hire you for that. You are here because you should know better than I do. Unlocking possibilities means having that humility and boldness to lead a team that is far better than you, emphasizing that the whole is always greater than the sum of its parts. Because only then can you say that you will be able to bring your work to even greater heights. On a more personal level, Sir Baki never stopped discouraging me from being too busy at work, reminding me to make time to nurture other aspects of my life. Too. He taught me that being good does not equate to just career, that the imbalance resulting from single-mindedly focusing on my career would haunt me in the future. He was relentless with his reminders, never stopping until he saw me fixing the other facets of my life. That would make me truly whole. He always talked about being smart meant working smart, and living smarter too. While he may have lived this way once in his life, he wanted his life story be my reminder. So I don't make the same short-sighted calls and prioritizing work so I get the chance to live even better than he probably did by knowing that lesson earlier on in my life. His mentorship deepened even when I left the company to pursue other passions. He was generous with his time making himself available to celebrate milestones, to catch up and to listen more intently, especially when I am at the crossroads. He never offered answers, but he was present like a big brother was to me, asking the hard and the toughest questions until I found the answers myself. Sir Baki has seen me evolve through these years, calling me out for my mistakes without judgment, but instead with a heart for helping me learn from them. This genuine involvement in another person's life without seeking gain, has become for me what true mentorship means. He wasn't out to make me another version of himself. He walked with me in my journey, giving me the confidence to grow into my own brand of leadership. I count myself very blessed, not only because I was mentored by the true visionary like him, but that I get to see for myself such a compelling living example of the kind of impact a leader can make on so many. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and 
um, and my pleasure to introduce and share with you this afternoon one of Man Smith Market Masters Awardees, Mr. Sebastian Bach. Good afternoon. Uh, firstly, I want to thank uh, Josiah and Chiki and everyone in Mansmith for this award. Thank you also, Tin, for the uh, very kind words and the, uh, and the vote of confidence. It is one thing to be recognized for your achievements and another to be recognized for how you have helped others achieve. At the end of the day, a good mentor is one whose mentee outgrows him or her. And awards like this give me hope that I am encouraging just that. I am also a product of those from whom I have had a privilege to learn. Growing up, I always enjoyed the company of people much older than me because of the stories they tell. We all like a good story, but I especially like those that allowed me to learn, explore options, or envision what futures could be in store for me if I made the right choice or work hard enough. Allow me this afternoon to share with my favorites, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Here's the story. Once upon a time, a tortoise and a hare had an argument about who was faster. They decided to settle the argument with the race. They agreed on a route and started off. The hare shot ahead and ran briskly for some time. Then, seeing that he was far ahead of the tortoise, he thought he'd sit under a tree for a while and relax before continuing the race. He soon fell asleep. The tortoise, plodding on, overtook him and slowly finished the race, emerging as the winner. The hare woke up and realized that he'd lost the race because his inherent speed made him overconfident. Of course, we all know the moral of the story, and that is slow and steady wins the race. This is the version that we've all grown up with. But then recently, someone told me a more interesting version. Let me continue. The hare was disappointed at losing the race and quickly decided to do some root cause analysis. He realized that he'd lost the race only because he had been complacent, lax, and careless. If he had not taken things for granted, there's no way the tortoise could have beaten him. So he challenged the tortoise to another race, to which the tortoise agreed. This time, a hare went all out and ran without stopping from start to finish. He won by several miles. So what is this new version telling us? Fast and consistent will always be slow and steady. This second version of the fable could teach us all something about today's marketing environment. The past two years of the pandemic have been arguably among the most difficult for many businesses and industries the world over. Situations were constantly changing, patterns would emerge and then disappear, Approaches needed adjusting from one moment to the next. Old company practices no longer applied in this new volatile environment. And so acting with speed and urgency could determine whether a business would stay afloat or not. We needed to keep learning about evolving consumer taste and preferences, and then promptly adjust our brand playbooks. As much as slow and steady was attractive, fast and consistent was what was needed. Today, done is certainly better than perfect. But the story doesn't end there. The tortoise did some thinking this time and realized that there's no way he can beat the hare the way the race is currently designed. He thought for a while and then challenged the hare to yet another race, this time on a slightly different route. The hare agreed, and they started off. In keeping with his self-made commitment to be consistently fast, 
the hare took off and ran at top speed until he came to a wide river. Fish line is a couple of miles to the other side of the river. The hare sat there, wondering how he could cross the water. In the meantime, the tortoise trundled along, got into the river, swam to the opposite bank, continued walking, and won that race. Now, what have we learned here? Identify your core competency, and then change the playing field to suit your core competency. I am sure we all know of or have mentored ourselves, someone like the tortoise before this part of the story. We may know someone who has tried and failed and is now too daunted at the odds to try again. Someone who is able, but not willing, lacking in self-confidence. As mentors, our role is not so much to instruct, as it is to encourage. When someone like the tortoise comes along, it is part of our job to show the difference that comes from believing that you can instead of cannot. You need to identify your unique gifts and play to it without giving in so much to the temptation of comparing yourself to others whose stories and gifts are likely very different. Take it from the third place. Sometimes all it takes to win a race is to discover your strengths and then change the course to suit them. And our story still hasn't ended. By this time, the hare and the tortoise had become pretty good friends, and they did something together. What they did was they realized that the last race could have been run much better. And so they decided to do the last race again, but this time to run as a team. They started off. The hare carried the tortoise until the riverbank. There, the tortoise took over and swam across with the hare in his back. On the opposite bank, the hare again carried the tortoise and they reached the finish line together. They both won the race and also felt a greater sense of accomplishment than they had earlier. The moral of the story, it's good to be individually brilliant and to have strong core competencies. But unless you're able to work well in a team and enable others and harness their own strengths, we'll always perform below par because there will always be situations at which you will do poorly and someone else will do well. Note that neither the hare nor the tortoise gave up after failures. The hare decided to work harder, putting in more effort after his loss. The tortoise, in turn, decided to change his strategy because he was already working as hard as he could. This new version of the story of the hare and the tortoise can certainly teach us many things. Allow me to sum up those important lessons for all of us this afternoon. Fast and consistent will always beat slow and steady. Identify your competencies and work to them. Pulling resources and working as a team will always meet individual performers. Lastly, never give up when faced with failure. In today's business environment, citizen life, when we fail, sometimes it is enough to work harder and put in more effort. Other times, it is necessary to change strategy and try something completely different. And then sometimes, if you will ask the hare and the tortoise, it is even better to do both. Thank you again to Josiah, Chiki, and all at Man Smith for this honor. I would also like to congratulate my fellow awardees this afternoon and applaud the work they do in encouraging young marketing masters. Before ending, I want to acknowledge again that I too have had mentors of my own. From them, I've learned that your true work is not just your job. Your job is simply what you do. Our true work lies in taking care of other people, giving service to those who need our efforts most, and making a difference along the way. So I want to share this award 
with all those who believe in giving of their time and talent, not just as a way to contribute to their own success, but more importantly, to enable the success of all those around them. Thank you very much. Thank you.